Hey guys, this is Professor Jay from Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. Today, I will teach you what a beat frequency is. If I sound them together and you listen, you can hear that they are making the same note. And if I play them together, as I said, they are making the same note and they are in an agreement. Therefore, they are forming a constructive interference. If I turn this off, You can easily realize that the amplitude of the sound has went down. But what if I slightly change the frequency of one of the sound source? What's going to happen? I'll tell you in a minute. And I'll gradually increase the frequency differences, okay? Two sound waves of slightly different frequency approach your ear. The alternating constructive and destructive interference causes the sound to be alternatively soft and loud. And that's the reason why you've heard that um, the wobbling sound in the audio. And that's called the beat wave. And uh, the beat frequency is equal to the absolute value of the difference in frequency of the two waves. And now we're going to look at how the beat frequency is correlated to the beat period. I highly recommend you to repeat the experiment at least three times and use the mean value for the process data. This is the process data table, as you can see. Um, the absolute uncertainty of the beat period is 100 milliseconds, and you can see from the percentage uncertainty that um, it's quite high, actually. Once it goes to um, 14 hertz for the beat frequency, the percentage uncertainty is more than 100%. So if this was um, your IA or an experiment that requires extremely accurate data, I will not recommend you using PyFox. Applying the knowledge that we have from topic 4 wave unit of our IB core syllabus, we know that frequency is inversely proportional to the period of the wave. Thus, ideally, we should acquire a graph that looks like this. Y equals to 1 over X graph. 
And if you look at the graph that I've plotted, it is apparent that the shape of the graph is similar to a 1 over x graph. It would have been better if I had a smaller increment for the independent variable, but still the result that I've attained portrays an accurate trend that is similar to the literature value. In conclusion, it is apparent that there is an inverse correlation between the dependent variable, beat frequency, and the independent variable, beat period, in my experiment. This was evident in graph 1, as it demonstrated an almost perfect 1 over x graph. I've predicted the inverse correlation between the beat frequency and beat period due to the property of frequency being inversely proportional to the period. And I can say with certainty that the following phenomenon occurs with the beat wave as well, as it is supported by the process graph and the analysis that I've conducted. The large percentage error due to the impreciseness of the Firefox audio scope is an error that should be fixed in the future experiment. As an extension to this mini experiment, I'll show you how beating frequency can be used in real life to tune your musical instrument. As you've checked, I wasn't able to hear any wobbling sound, which means I was perfectly in tune. Yes. Here is how an actual um, musician tunes his guitar using the theory of uh, a beating frequency. Do you hear the wobbling, the beating sounds? So um, what musicians usually do is that they will try to tune their instrument until that sound disappears. That's it for today, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.